Welcome to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. Thanks for all the likes and comments on the last video. If you would like to support this channel, please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you enjoy the content. And now let's start with the first story. It's called Bonus Points. I just graduated high school this year, but I want to talk about one of my favorite teachers. I will call him Mr. W. Mr. W was a fun but old fashioned teacher. Mr. W taught us everything we needed to know and even had a deal with all his classes. Mr. W said he had never had a student who passed on one of his tests by cheating. So his agreement was, if you got caught cheating, you got a zero on the test. And if you passed the test while cheating somehow, you would get half of what the test was worth. I had fixable grades, but he had one thing we were expected to memorize. We had to remember a specific list that I'd already forgotten. For the life of me, I couldn't remember this list. This list was a large part of every graded project we did. I had a D- in his class and had been studying for an upcoming final worth roughly 40% of our grade. I had a runny nose the day of the test and had a tissue box on me the whole day. At lunch I was panicking and trying to memorize the list and a devious idea dawned upon me. I would fail if I didn't cheat or have a 50-50 shot if I did. I took my wrist and wrote the entire list down carefully on a tissue, then put it back in the box. I had his class after lunch, so when I took the final I got my tissue cheat sheet and copied it as sneakily as possible. I blew my nose with it and threw it away. I got a 76% on my quiz, which brought me to about a C. I was so happy. I didn't think that Mr. W would keep his end of the deal, so I didn't tell him until the next 9 weeks. To my surprise, he gave me 36 points for managing to cheat in his classroom. He was always a great guy. Zero grudges occurred on either side. However, he updated his policy to if a student gets away with cheating in his classroom, he will only add 5 points to whatever they cheated on. And late confessions are no longer valid. The next story is called Last Minute. I'm a university student and I don't think I've ever had a moment in my entire career that I felt like a nanny to the professor. This class is all about learning how to write for different types of media, like TV, film, radio, etc. Prof is fairly new to the teaching gig, so I was willing to be lenient regarding how she was teaching the class. As per usual, we had a textbook for the class that we seldom used. I was collecting more assignments than I was needing to open it. If I remember correctly, we only really had like two or three assignments from the book itself, so it was effectively useless to even have it. But we are having a good time with this class. But if there's one thing this prof is bad at, it's organization. She kept changing the syllabus of the class as we went and sometimes even fully disregarded the changes she made. Sometimes she wouldn't even have in writing the changes she made. You just had to be in class. This is fine, I guess. Her overall feedback towards my work was beneficial, so I didn't mind the other things that I could have done without. We meet for the last time and she wanted hard copies of the final draft of our scripts. Would have been nice to know since I wasn't in class the second to last day due to sickness. I email it, she accepts it. We are all good. She tells us when our final was and sends us on our way. Last Monday was the first day of finals week and she decides to let us know that we, the entire class, were missing assignments. I look online in the gradebook and I see a brand new assignment that had not been there a few nights prior. I told her exactly what she told us in class back in extremely early October that we didn't need to do that assignment because we'd be doing the same kind of assignment for our screenplays. She kept insisting that no, we had to do this assignment and she'd scrap two others that we didn't have time for or were a copy of this one. I looked up one of those two assignments and saw that I had a grade for it. I told her that we did that assignment, but she had told us to skip the one we were supposedly missing. She returned and doubled down that we were to do the treatment assignment, which was for our favorite reality TV show and I don't watch any and not the other two. I took a picture of the assignment in my textbook as well as my gradebook and explained that she had us do the supposed cancelled assignment but for 5 pages instead of 15. She didn't respond to that email. I still haven't gotten a response to that email. But that made me say whatever and do the TV show treatment assignment she wanted. But I decided I didn't want to do it seriously and picked out a random episode of Total Drama Island on Netflix, wrote out the treatment and turned it in. She gave me full marks but never responded to my last email. I gave a scathing course evaluation response. If 
third story is called Blank Notice. Many, many years ago, I did tech support for MSN and Web TV in an MCI WorldCom building. I rocked a 4x10 shift, noon to 11 pm. The restrooms weren't centrally located, and it was literally a 2 minutes 17 seconds walk. Yes, I actually timed it. So if I only just washed my hands, it would send a flag up. If you weren't locked in for more than 5 minutes, it alerted a supervisor. I'm sure you already see where this is going. My lunch and dinner break was about 6 and then around 8.30 pm. Eventually my performance review comes up and stellar remarks across the board. However, they noticed that like clockwork I'm away from my desk for 11 to 14 minutes. I shared how much time it took to walk round trip from my desk and that it would be impossible to conduct any business properly without running afoul of the 5 minute limit. Then they actually asked if I could just wait until my shift was over. After laughing, before realizing that they weren't joking, I also very politely and delicately reminded them of how human biology works, and that it would not be reasonable to expect me to wait until almost midnight. They said they understood, but would I please let them know when I'll be away from the desk? I said, sure, no problem. While sitting there, I wrote out a note. Every day at 8.30, I will be relieving myself and will be back at my desk within 15 minutes. I handed it in and said, here's my blanket notice. Any questions? They were mad and accepted it, but never hassled me about the bathroom again. I actually was a great tech and I think that's why they didn't can me on the spot for that. I quit a few months later anyway. The next story is called Break Schedule. I worked in a cafeteria on campus at my university. It was wonderful because I could take shifts around lectures and didn't lose time traveling. The manager used to sit in her office on the phone or just disappear for long periods of time. I didn't mind because I liked my other co-workers and she left us alone to do our thing. I always volunteered to do the closing shift because the owner let me take home all of the leftover food. It basically kept me and my housemates alive and we were very grateful. The problem was, on a 5 hour or longer shift you had to take a 30 minute break. I'd always ask when mine was, but she'd always say later, we are too busy. I'd usually end up just working the whole 5 hours. I didn't mind, until I realized she was only paying me for 4 and a half. I asked her about it, and she said if I didn't take my breaks, that wasn't her problem. Q malicious compliance. My next closing shift was 4 and a half hours of opening hours and finished 30 minutes after closing. Everyone else went at 7 and I stayed back by myself to clean everything in 30 minutes. It was a big job, but I had it down pat. The entire shift I kept asking her if I could take my break and she kept saying no. So at 7 I took my apron off and walked out, saying I'll be taking my break now since we were too busy before. I sat in the cafeteria and watched her clean that entire place. It took her well over an hour. The next day she had her break schedule up. The last story is called Cheese Compliance. This happened last week. My husband and I live in an area prone to hurricanes. This year we decided to buy some emergency hurricane food. They come in white little bags and you essentially rehydrate the food and cook it for 20 minutes. Hurricane season came and went. And thankfully we didn't have to touch our emergency supply. But being curious as to how the food tasted, we decided to start cooking and trying them out. We tried chicken noodle soup, stroganoff and cheesy broccoli rice and they were all pretty good. On this particular night, we wanted to try and make mac and cheese, which we both love. The supply came with powdered cheese and elbow macaroni in separate bags. The cheese packet had instructions for both single serving portions. Or you could make the whole bag of cheese sauce, but would have to use two bags of elbow macaroni. Now, I didn't have a tablespoon. And I love to follow instructions, so I was struggling to get started without the exact measurements. My husband told me, just make the entire bag and add the water slowly. Now, I personally am very picky with leftover mac and cheese and my husband knows this. So I reminded him about my pickiness and how he'd have to be the one who finishes the leftover mac. He said, I'm fine with it, I don't have a problem eating the same meal every day. A little jab at me that we both giggled about. I reply with, are you sure? This is what a single serving of macaroni looks like. Keep in mind the pasta is going to expand. He said he was sure. So I got to work. I started making the cheese sauce and boiling water when I get a whiff of the sauce. It's a strong stinky cheese smell that I immediately know I'm not going to enjoy. I took a small sample and oof, it was strong. 
So I told him, I'm out. This is all yours. I'm gonna make myself some soup with an eggy. He shrugged but agreed the cheese was aggressively stinky for a mac and cheese. Well, halfway through the cooking time, the macaroni expanded and I can see my husband's brain working which I start giggling about. He changes the pot of macaroni to a bigger pot, now realizing how much macaroni he committed himself to. We finish cooking and start to eat. He's got his plate of mac and cheese and I've got my soup. I'm smiling as he struggles to eat the mac and cheese. The cheese sauce didn't exactly look good with the macaroni, kind of made it look dry, to be honest. Halfway through his meal, he sighs and looks at the pot on the stove, then looks at the plate in front of him and sighs again, saying, my eyes were bigger than my head. We both laughed at his pain. He finished the mac and cheese in like 4 or 5 days, ate it for lunch and dinner, even though it basically became a brick after being refrigerated. I will give him props for sticking to his word though, I would have straight up chucked it in the trash. And with that, we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories and today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and want to support me, please subscribe and hit the like button. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.